Hello, I'm Nick Huntington Klein, and I'm going to tell you about how to uh, run a regression in R. Uh, and we're also going to be loading in a data set and then also looking at the results of the regression after we run it. So let's see what we can do. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to load up a data set to work with. Uh, and I'm going to tell you that the data set that we're going to work with is called housing data set, and it is in the ECDAT package. The ECDAT package has a number of cool uh, uh, data sets in it uh, for economic data. So let's load up the ECDAT package. So I, I type this in, library ECDAT, to load up the ECDAT package. I hit control enter or command enter on uh, uh, Mac on uh, OS X, uh, and then it ran the line where it loaded in the ECDAT package. From there, I can load in my data set of interest. So I'm going to load in the data set, uh, and when I put in uh, data, it will just pop up all the data sets that are currently loaded into R uh, based on the packages that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to the housing data set that I am looking for. So this data set has a number of uh, 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 of observations on uh, housing sales and the qualities of those houses, like the number of rooms and the lot size and things like that. So I have this data set. So first thing that I want to do before I run any sort of analysis every single time is I want to look at the data set so I know what it is that I'm working with. And there's a number of ways that we can do this. So the first thing, if it's a data set that we loaded in from a package like this, there's probably going to be a help file on that data set. So I'm going to ask for help on the housing data set, and just see what pops up. It'll pop up over here in the housing, uh, in the in the, the help uh, section here, and it'll give me descriptions of all of the variables. Now, this is very nice uh, when we have a data set that's loaded in from a package. Of course, if we're loading a data set in from a file, we probably won't have this. Uh, but we can look right now and see, okay, well, the price is the sale price of the house. The lot size is how big the property size is in feet, uh, the kinds of things that you'd expect in a data set of housing transactions. Uh, let's also see how else we could look at it if we didn't have this or, you know, in addition to this. So the one thing we also might want to do is to just look at the data directly. If we go to our environment tab and click on the, uh, the, 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 ob the object, the data object, or we click, or we type view, and then the name of the data set, it will just bring it up like a spreadsheet. And we can look around and see what we have in this data set. And this is always really helpful because it'll tell you the kinds of observations that are in there. Uh, so, for example, I can look at the price and say, oh, yeah, that's probably like the price of that house and not like the price in thousands, for example. Uh, or, you know, the lot size, that must be square feet. It doesn't specify, oh, yeah, it says so over here in the help file, but if we didn't have the help file, we could probably guess from this that this is square feet. Uh, similarly, for all these other ones, you can see that uh, a lot of these variables over here, they say yes and no rather than true and false, as you might expect in an R data set. Uh, but we sort of know what's going on here now. We can also uh, use the vtable package to look at our data. So I'm going to load up the vtable package as well. And then I'm going to say, give me the vtable of housing. And what this will do is over here in the viewer section, it will bring up a description of each of the variables that are in the data set. Uh, so I've got price here, which tells me it's a numeric variable, which will be helpful because you have to have numeric or factor or logical variables if you're going to include them in a regression. It also tells me the range of those observations, which will again give me a sense of like, oh yeah, this is the this is the house, this is the price of the house, not the price of the house in thousands or in millions or in some other strange thing. Uh, it'll give me sort of a rundown of all my data, which is handy. Okay, so now that I have an idea of what might be in my data, I can run my analysis. So I'm right now working on a bivariate ordinary least squares model, so I'm only going to have two variables. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to model uh, price as a function of lot size. So I'm going to use price as my y variable, as my dependent variable. I'm going to use lot size as my independent variable, as my x variable. So how can I construct a regression in R? So I'm going to use the LM function. Uh, that's for linear model. And that's how we can run a standard ordinary least squares model. Uh, so in the LM model, there's, uh, first of all, when we pop up the, uh, the parentheses, it'll give us a little tooltip that tells us the kinds of things that it expects in there. Now, really, most of the time, there's only a few things that we need to worry about. There's the formula, there's the data. Occasionally, we need to worry about the weights, but we're not going to worry about that today uh, if you're running run a, a weighted regression like that. But two things are the formula and the data. So the formula tells R what kind of regression you want to run. What do you want to be your dependent variable? What do you want to be your independent variable? That's the formula for the regression that it is running. And then the data is just telling it what data set you're operating on. So that's going to be housing for us. So let's actually start there. Let's say that, that the data set is equal to housing. Great. Now, uh, now we need to figure out what the formula is. Now, the way that formulas work in R, at least on the basic level, is that we have our dependent variable, which is going to be price. And then we use this, uh, the, this little tilde or squiggly line there uh, to say that what how, how price varies. How is price distributed? Well, price is the dependent variable, 
it is distributed according to our independent variables, right? It follows a distribution, uh, and that distribution depends on our independent variables, which here is just going to be the lot size. That's it. Uh, we can, of course, construct fancier formulas. This one just has two variables in it, but we can add other stuff in there as well. Uh, but for now, let's just keep it to the two, and we can run this regression. And we can see when we run this regression, it's going to give us some information down here when we run it. Again, I just hit Control Enter or Command Enter on, on, on a Mac to, to run that. It'll just give us the coefficients. And so it says, okay, our intercept for this regression is 34,136. So on a lot size of zero, I would predict that your housing size would be 34,136. It also has a, co a coefficient on lot size of 6.6, it uh, looks like. So if the lot size increases by one unit, which we know from looking over here is one square foot. So a one square, fair, square foot larger lot size is associated with a housing price that is $6.6 dollars uh, higher. All right, so we know how to run a regression. Now, what can we do with that regression? So like everything in R, a regression is actually an object. It's a regression object. And if we wanna do anything interesting in it, we wanna, we wanna save that object and then run it through a function later that can make some use of it. So I'm gonna take this, uh, this regression model here. I'm gonna save it. I'm just gonna call it M. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it M. So what am I going to want to do with this? Well, I want to look at a table of the regression results. That will be helpful. And I'm also going to want to look at a graph of the regression itself. So for this, for all these things, I'm going to load in the JTools package. So let me load that in right there. Uh, so then uh, I want to look at a table of regression results. I can do that with the export sums function, and I can just feed it my regression. I can feed it more than one regression. I can do M and M and M, but I only got one regression here, so I'm just going to do the one M. Uh, if I do that, it will export down here my table of regression results. So that 34,000 we had, here it is. It can also tell me the standard error of that coefficient and the level of significance that it has. Note the, the sort of star key down here. It'll also give me the coefficient on lot size over here and the standard error on it and the, the number of stars. Uh, export sums can also, if I think that I have heteroscedasticity, uh, use uh, robust standard errors or clustered standard errors. For uh, robust error errors, I just do robust equals true. If you go into the documentation, you can find out the other kind. There are multiple kinds of robust standard errors. If you want to pick one, you go into the documentation. Uh, so I can do that, and it will uh, slightly change the standard errors. Of course, the coefficient themselves itself does not change. I can also cluster the standard errors. Now, there's really not really anything in here that makes me think I should be clustering the errors, but if I think that the errors are clustered over a certain variable, I can do that with export sums as well. I just need to give it the name of the variable that I think they are clustered at. So I can say cluster uh, equals, let's say, bedrooms. I don't think that makes any sense here, but, you know, we can do it. And then it'll give me the standard errors as though they're clustered by bedroom. So that's showing my results in a regression table. I can, of course, put multiple models in there to all look at them at the same time. I also want to graph the regression. So how can I do that? So still in JTools, there are two ways to graph our regression results. The first one doesn't look very good for bivariate regression, but let's do it anyway. It'll look better when we have more, uh, a multivariate regression in there later. And that is um, plot coefs. And that will just give me a plot that shows me the coefficients themselves and their 95% and their confidence interval. So if I do that, it will pop up in this graph over here. Again, not much to look at with only one variable, but here's the coefficient, that's 6.6, .6, and then there's a 95% confidence interval on that coefficient. Uh, for right now, probably more interesting is effect plot of this regression. And what this will do is this will plot the regression line itself. Uh, and it will ask me, first of all, uh, what do what variable do I want to be on the x-axis? So, so our regression fits a shape uh, relating an x-axis variable and a y-axis variable. Which variable do I want on the x-axis? Here it's obvious there's only one variable on the x-axis anyway, and that is x size. I'm going to say pred equals lot size, or sorry, it's lot size uh, is on the x-axis. So I want that there. Uh, if I just do this, it'll just show me the line relating the two. Uh, now, usually I will also want the uh, to show the dots behind it, just so I can get a sense of how well that line is fitting, the, those dots, and also you know whether there's something weird going on. And so I can say plot.points equals true, and if I do that, then I get the line and then also the points. And so I can, I can sort of see, oh, yeah, there might be some sort of heteroscedasticity here going on, in which case I'd want to use those robust standard errors. All right, that is the basics of how to run a regression in R and look at the results of it. Uh, all right, that's it. Thank you.